Mm, look at them all. That's right, today I'm going to be testing Copic markers for the very first time. I've only ever used cheap knockoff versions in the past, um, so I'm very, very excited. I've always wanted Copic markers, but I've never had this, like, need to go out and buy them. So when my friend was selling her set, so this is the Jessica curated set, I decided to jump on the opportunity and buy them from her. She also gave me her color charts. So I have swatches of all the colors already. I don't have to do that, even though that's part of the fun, isn't it? <laughs> if you don't know what Copic markers are, they're alcohol-based markers, but like they're the top tier marker. They're like the coveted marker. <laughs> I've always bought cheap knockoff versions. And uh, this is actually the top line of Copic markers. This is the sketch. Copic also makes a chow and an original version, which have different nibs. Um, this is the sketch, so it has a chisel on one end and a brush nib on the other which allows for a lot of flexibility and then this for like covering wide areas. It's definitely the type of one that I had my eye on from the get-go, so <laughs> I'm very excited to finally have my hands on these. And then these two are actually gifted by a subscriber, so thank you very much. I'm not gonna be doing like a direct comparison with any of my other markers. I'm just going to explain what I think about them when I use them, so. Oh, I also have paper here. I don't have any like special paper. I have this. I guess it is special paper. This is marker paper, but it's the Winsor & Newton brand. Winsor & Newton also makes some alcohol-based markers, which I've tried, but I don't love them. <laughs> the markers that I like the most are Ohu currently, so I'm excited to see if these can knock it out of the park since these are like 10 times the price of an Ohu marker. If you don't know about marker paper, you have to use a specific side of it. And I have these like small sheets that I cut out and I don't know which side, so these are basically useless but you always want to use the top of the marker paper because the back is coated so that the marker doesn't bleed through. And if you draw on the coated side, it looks super smudgy and you can just smudge it with your hand. Jessica sold me these markers. She also gave me this case thing that's in. These are actually all separate little doodads, which is really, really cool. I'm not, I think she bought them on Amazon. If she did, I'll ask her and I'll have a link in the description if you want to check it out. I have no idea how much they cost, but this is kind of cool. Like I can just move them. Then you can also stack them so that they're more um, in a sort of stair shape. There you go. Now maybe you can see them better. That looks cool. <laughs> There's other markers. Here I have a piece of paper. I have an idea of something to draw. I'm kind of like facing a bit of an art block lately. So I'm hoping if I keep it really simple, we'll get through this together. It's fine. I really want to draw bell bottoms. That's that's the spoiler. Spoiler, I really feel like drawing bell bottoms. I'm actually gonna fold this in half. So I don't feel so overwhelmed about you filling the whole page on my first attempt using markers. That way I can draw on either side and it's the correct side. Hey. Can I just draw something? Let's give her a pointy ears. Like an elf. Bell bottoms. <laughs> They're like giant tree trunks. I'm really tight around the thigh, then when they jet out at the ankle, it'll be even more obvious, you know? Now the question is, do I want her shoes to show or just, just, just pants? <laughs> I'm gonna go a little bit past the knee actually, and then jet out. Looks like some kind of pop star. I really want to give her like a super saturated skin tone, like a purple or a blue. I think that'd be really, really fun. That's what I'm, I'm feeling. I did not sketch where her arms were gonna be and now I'm uh, lost. <laughs> She's like a, <laughs> She's dancing <laughs> or something. Not crazy about the swirls in the hair. Maybe I could play around with that a bit better. I should actually draw the hands instead of leaving them as just little circles. Should I give her a microphone? Make the pop star thing complete? <laughs> I don't know. I'd rather it hint at pop star than actually be full pop star. Okay, I think I just need to fix the top of her hair and then we're done with the sketch and I can go in and start adding some line art. I'm liking it. All right, let's uh, add the line art I'm gonna be using. Wait, actually, let me see if I can figure out which side of this. Actually, we can figure out by just using a marker. Is she just blank? I right, didn't smudge, I'm guessing that's the wrong side. By the way, that was a very juicy marker. I appreciate that. It worked very, very well. <laughs> that has a nice line. We can test that. So this is a uni pin. Is 
what it's called? Oh, uni pin? There's a pin, maybe it's a uni pin. I've never actually paid attention. Anyway, we're gonna test that with the Copic marker and we're testing this Prismacolor Premier. Let's use E11, since I have no idea what that color looks like. There's a bit of smudging actually. Oop, there's a lot with that. Ew, 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 get it off, get it off. Uni pin one, that one. <laughs> We're gonna use that to uh, add some line art to this puppy. Like always, I'm going to just slightly erase everything so that I can just better visualize what it's gonna look like with the line art while doing the line art. Give her a little sharp tooth in there. Cause she's like a goblin of some kind. And then the ear with her earrings. There we go. Now for the body. The other thing about Copic markers and alcohol-based markers in general is that you're supposed to be able to blend them really well. I'm not a super blender. Like, I don't blend a lot in my art. I like really flat tones. But we're gonna have to try and add some kind of gradients in here maybe and then test that out. Just the pill bottoms. All right, now we can finish erasing everything and see what we're working with. All right, there we have the line art. Now we have to decide on some colors and we get to use the Colby markers, finally. Let me just quickly draw a little doodad here. Good enough. <laughs> now we have to try and decide on some colors. What I'm picturing, let me grab my swatches. So I want, I'm thinking, ooh, that could be really pretty, RV95. <laughs> I don't know where anything is in here. Ooh, there it is called Baby Blossoms. I love that they have names. RV9, okay, that doesn't look anything like the cap. Does that resemble the cap to you? Well, on this paper, it's almost grayer, whereas on this paper, it has more of a saturated color. It's still not quite the cap. On camera, it actually does look kind of like the cap, but in life, that looks purple and this looks pink. But I like this color, so let's try this for maybe the skin tone. Seems a little streaky, but I guess if you went over that again. I'm not gonna make any final judgments on these markers yet. So far they feel very similar to basically any other marker I've tried. I haven't noticed anything that's like, whoa, yeah, go spend 10 times as much on these. That I haven't felt yet. <laughs> okay, for the hair color, we could go maybe with a blonde. Would that look good with this? We could try R000. It looks like it says Aru. It's actually the color, oh, it's the color silk. Let's try that for the hair. Ooh, that might be a little too light, but I do like the way it contrasts. Oh, and what if we blend it into some like pink color, like uh, like this uh, BV000000, there's a lot of zeros. It's rose quartz, that's V000. Come on, BV000. That's another thing that's supposed to be really cool about these markers is the way that they're numbered. It's supposed to help with like color theory and mixing good colors together. That color might be a little too light. That's almost like non-existent. <laughs> Maybe V01. The color Heth. Heth? Oh yeah, that's a much nicer color to blend into for her hair. Okay, we should be writing these down so that I can use them. Pants, I'm feeling a bright red. <laughs> that might be a little crazy though since we have purples. Right now we just have purples and yellows. Red might be a little out there, but let's try it. Maybe this R24, or we could go R21 if I want to go a little lighter. Oh, that's kind of pretty. I like that color. Bolder color, what that'll look like. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Look how out there that is. Um, which one do I want to go with? I'm feeling this one. I like that it's super bright and like in your face. <laughs> you also do like the embroidery in this color. How's that for a color scheme? I don't know if I should start with the lightest color first, maybe? R0. I keep wanting to say Aru. It really looks like it says Aru. <laughs> but I guess it's R. Y R 0 0 0. Let's try the chisel. I use the chisel a lot in Ohulu markers because they're a bullet nib on the other end and that doesn't cover a lot of space. These actually feel really stiff compared to an Ohulu chisel. <gasps> Ooh, that's bleeding. Oh no. I tested this and that didn't happen. Well, this is an accurate portrayal of the very first time I'm using these markers, that's for sure. I'm gonna have to try and find better liners for them. 
This feels like I could buy the actual Copic ones. Okay, not in love with the chisel. Let's go back to the brush because I was loving the brush. The brush is definitely softer than any other brush I've tried. Like the Winsor Newton brush markers. Um, they're a little stiffer than this or like the master markers. They were a lot stiffer than this. This has a very fluid um, looking probably I betcha you can get some really thin lines and some thick lines like with just one brush. That's pretty cool. I mean you can do that with any brush but this one is especially soft like I'm feeling a difference and that's probably where the cost difference is coming in is in the quality of that brush nib. That's where I would bet you, because that's what feels the most different. The other thing I'm noticing is when you buy like the cheaper markers, you get a lot of saturated colors, and I'm betting those are easier. Well, we should probably blend that immediately before it dries. Which one was the blend of color? Anyway, I was saying, I think when you um, get the cheaper markers, there isn't as big of a range of uh, color options. And like just looking at these, these wonderful pastel colors that I love, I've never seen in one of the cheaper markers. So the fact that you can get those is just awesome. And I'm guessing it's like a harder color to replicate maybe, because I never see that in the cheaper supplies. Something that's that pastel and that you can layer that well. Like look, I'm just going over the same spot here and I'm getting a darker tone. So you're able to really layer these markers. Whereas Ohu, you are limited to a certain extent, especially with the darker markers. Like I feel like you can go over maybe twice, three times if you're lucky, depending on the color. And then it just kind of gets to its darkest point. <laughs> oh wait, I didn't finish this. Why did I put that down? The other thing that I've noticed that I'm really appreciating, the brush nib is actually marked by this gray line, whereas the chisel doesn't have a gray line. So I don't have to like look for these tiny little marks that indicate chisel and brush. I just see the gray and I'm like, yep, that's the side I want. So I'm finding that very handy. I believe Copic also, as you see, I've messed up this brush nib, <laughs> got it dark. But I believe Copic actually sells replacement nibs for both ends and you can buy refills, which is a huge, huge factor because that brings the cost down for these markers a lot because you can buy a refill that I think fills it like four or five times for the same price as a marker. So it's like buying five of them for the price of one. If it isn't obvious, I'm not a marker expert, but I'm sure in my opinions, because people have been asking me to try these markers for a very long time, and I'm very excited to finally uh, get my hands on them. This paper's holding up really well. I'm not getting super streaky or anything, so marker paper is probably the way to go. Kind of looks interesting. I should go over it again with the Aru color. I've never gotten that much change in tone with an Ohu marker just by going over a second time. That's really nice. I think I'm starting to see the difference here. <laughs> it's like I can just keep going and it like, look, it just keeps getting darker. That's really cool. Wow. RV95 baby blossoms. <laughs> I love the color names. Oh. Just saying, for five dollars a marker, can I please put the cap on the other end? Ooh, what if the inside of the ear was actually that violet color? Heath, Heath. Did I say that? Heath. That's kind of pretty. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's stick with that. I'm loving this color. I don't want to smudge any of the lines on the face, like what happened down there. So I'm going to be very careful around the line right here. These blend together really well. You can see where I waited for it to dry a little too long. It's building up color again. But like with Art and Fly, like there were actual streaks. These markers seem juicier, but that might be the paper. Oh, look at that. It's not even bleeding through at all. This is pretty good paper. She kind of looks like a troll. <laughs> even shade under her chin. Yeah, I'm definitely noticing a difference when it comes to layering compared to the cheaper markers I've tried and less streaking. And then her belly's the last thing to color in for the skin tone. I could darken up this arm because it's a little bit more in the background. Wow, <laughs> this was cool, okay. Kind of messed up I think with the face, but like the eight, but using what I learned doing the face, like going over the same places, get darker color, so you have to kind of like go faster in certain areas. I was able to use that at the belly and I feel like it really helped make the belly look cool because like look at that like shine and then look where it's darker on the sides and like down the center like mm, mm. 
I can see if I like practice these a lot more. We could get some really cool effects, man. Now, do I want to go with this R24, the color prawn for her pants? Is it too different from the purples? You know what? We're doing it. We we got we got to take some chances, like Miss Frizzle says. There we go. <laughs> There's no going back now. Ooh, that is looking schnazzy. I really like this color. Okay, Copic's starting to win me over. The lack of streaking in this. Although there will be here because I let that dry like an idiot, but <laughs> the lack of streaking. I can get like solid tones. Oh, it makes me so happy. I assume the bigger the area, the harder that is to do. Okay, yeah, I got a little streaking there, but I bet if I go over this like one more time here, like a so. Look, it's like almost invisible. And I've used the Windsor and Newton markers on this paper and they've been a lot streakier than this, so. That just goes to show you, I think that's the marker, not just the paper. <laughs> See, like if I do that, if I go really fast, you get the streaks, which that looks a lot. That's about what I would get with some of the other markers. I keep going through the lines, I'm sorry. Can't really help it. So yeah, if you go slower, you get a much even coat, a much more even coat than when you go fast, which I guess makes a lot of sense. But I'm not entirely sure how maybe experts do larger areas of color because that seems a lot more difficult to do without getting streaks. All right, let's do the embroidery here. So we're gonna have to try and use this brush nib and the ability to do finer details since it's pointy on the end to uh, try and draw some kind of intricate design maybe. <laughs> with my shaky hands. I'm just gonna try and go with like a simple floral pattern. Some paisleys or something. I'm just trying to make it symmetrical on each side. Maybe there's like a star in the center or another flower. I guess it's a flower. Star didn't work out. There we go. That's kind of cute. An extra dot there. We're just about done but I do want to add some kind of blush. I don't know if I waited too long for that. Why don't we just try it with the R24 and that way we don't use more colors. Oh, that's too dark. Oh no. Oh, maybe we can blend that out a bit. Uh, mistakes, mistakes. I don't see another color that I'd really like to use for that. I could try RV13. Oh, it's called Tender Pink. Yeah, that was a better option. <laughs> see the tips of her ears, so across the nose there a bit. A little bit of it shoulders and elbows and maybe knuckles <laughs> knuckles that's really cool the other thing i want to do is maybe add some white embroidery to the pants and with that i'm going to use a white gel pen one of my favorite gel pens the uniball Signo white gel pen and i'm going to use that to do the embroidery i'm going to try and sort of replicate some of that <laughs> i just realized this looks like a campfire oh well <laughs> some of these floral pattern It's not doing too hot. Here we go. Maybe there's some up at the hip too. That could be cute. Oh, I like the circles. I'm adding more circles. We can make this look less like a campfire. <laughs> we can also add some uh, highlight to her eyebrows. Color for that. I really like the way the, let me see what colors are. <laughs> the V01 and the R000 blend together. I really like that color that it gets. It's like a a purpley orange, it's really pretty. It's gonna be darker. Okay, I don't think I can get it much darker than what we're at right now. I think we reached the limit. Didn't really bleed through at all either. How cute is that? Look at that, look what we made. Our little bell bottom queen. <laughs> okay, I just went over with this, uh, I don't know, this hybrid white gel pen from my white gel pen review video. And it's actually working a lot better than the Signa white gel pen right now, but I think it's cause my Signa white gel pen is empty. Ooh. Cause I've used it so much because if you look it's kind of empty so I had to switch over to this guy the hybrid gel grip pen I've never made like a full marker illustration that I was like super proud of just because I'm so bad I think with color theory <laughs> but I'm actually kind of happy with this I think it turned out very cute I had a lot of fun especially just trying to like learn how to use these markers I do think these are a little overpriced still, like even after using them. I, I don't know, I expected like when you told them and you touch them and you're just like, oh, like an Ollivander moment when you find your wand, like, <laughs> I don't know. And I didn't get that. So maybe my, I had, well, my expectations were a little too high. They're definitely very nice markers. They're 
good quality, like obviously. The fact that you can replace the nibs and the ink and everything is a definite plus. If you don't have the budget for them though, I definitely recommend trying the Ohua markers because those are what I started with and those are something I still enjoy to use, especially in my sketchbooks where like, there's no rules, I can do whatever I want. These are the industry standard markers. And I think I can see now that I've used them why that is. Like they're, they're very nice markers and the way that you can layer them um, is very nice, but it's something you have to kind of get used to so that you don't end up with funny streakiness. <laughs> but the, it just, the pigments seem nicer. Yeah, that was me using Copic markers for the first time. Very nice. I really enjoyed using them. I feel like this is a very good mix. So thank you, Jessica. The Jessica curated mix. <laughs> I feel like it's a very good mix and it's something that I'm going to get a lot of use out of. Like there's a very good mix of colors in here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed coming on this journey with me trying Copics for the first time. Definitely a momentous occasion. <laughs> um, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye. She looks like a Cynthia. I'm going to name her Cynthia. Do you agree? <laughs>